Okay, good. So, uh, good evening, um, uh, U.S. Fox, uh, and then a good good morning, uh, people in Japan. Uh, so, I'm Harry Asada from MIT, yeah, uh, Master and other Fox. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to this exciting workshop. So, what I want to talk about is uh, basically aligned uh, with the uh, the scope of the, the workshop. I originally uh, submitted the more theoretical, analytic uh, uh, research work I've been doing in the field of uh, balancing, but uh, uh, the focus here is more the devices. So uh, let me just uh, uh, talk about something related to a uh, device design, uh, which I love. Um, so the uh, um, yeah, it's actually as, as as shown here, we are uh, focusing on the, some of the frail and older adults uh, who cannot actually uh, do some uh, balancing. They, they can walk, uh, but I know they're, they, they're sort of, uh, actually uh, fragile. So what sort of things that we can do uh, in the, the daily activities and rehabilitation exercise and uh, risk uh, uh, management? So as uh, Martha said, the mobility is a very important and a fundamental requirement for people to live independently. And in the case of the US, there are over 3 million older adults 65 or older treated the emergency department uh, for fall injuries. So that actually uh, cost uh, over 50 billion dollars. 75% uh, of them are charged to uh, Medicare, but it's a huge, huge expenses you know, for the government to do. So what we should do? Actually, falls mostly happened in the home, and then we like to assist the people, so-called aging in place, uh, they live they are love the homes. Uh, they interact with the, uh, the neighbors uh, um, in their community, so they want to live in their you know, homes. And then we like to provide the necessary uh, support so that they can live independently and safely. So uh, we look at the uh, some of the uh, you know fall risk uh, mitigation. One is actually uh, assisted uh, exercise, and then uh, assisting in the transfer and the balancing and the fall prevention and prevention. And then um, I'd like to talk about the three of our recent uh, results. And f first, I start with the project, the so-called Handle Anywhere. This is a very, very simple things, but it does help to people uh, standing up or, you know, um, in a walkthrough. Um, so that's very handy stuff. Number two, the robot assisted rehabilitation exercise for afraid or older adults. As I said, as, as Martha said, actually in moving things, you know, uh, mobility and, and, uh, and kind of physical activities does help uh, to maintain the health and most mentally and physically. Um, um, and then that is actually, uh, you know, recommended, but I you know to uh, mitigate the risk, uh, we use a robot to, uh, to uh, um, to uh, safely uh, support the um, you know, older adults. And then finally, you know, for the predictions and the prevention systems, so this is a more serious uh, people. Uh, we have to um, prevent the uh, and hard to hit uh, on, on the floor. So let me start with the very simple ones. So when your older parents are getting a little bit, you know, um, and afraid, uh, what you do? You uh, first uh, look at uh, the, their homes and then install the, some rails. As you can see here, that this is actually standard uh, in a ways. Um, ADA, in the case of the US, you know, they recommend they putting the uh, rails in the bathrooms, uh, toilets, and, and such a way, and the near bed, and, and so forth, right? So th this is actually a simple way. Um, so um, this is not the robotic device, but a very simple, the widely used. However, there are some of you know limitations. You can't actually place this uh, um, you know rails at any point, and it has to be you know on the floor or um, in a wall. So think about the, this situation: the bathroom. Uh, typically, we place the a uh, handrail attached to this wall, right? So imagine that uh, you need to get in and get out of this, you know, a bus stop. Getting in, you know, in particular, this rail is hard to reach. You wish to have the rail over here, but uh, there's no wall. Uh, this is actually floating in here. That is the situation that we are facing. So this is the problem I identified to be, I know, um, improved. So here we uh, propose handle anywhere. 
This is a reconcurable, relocatable handrails uh, systems for supporting elderly and the disabled people. So um, it's a very simple the systems. Uh, we combine the robotic arm with the handrail uh, at the tip and the mobile base. This is omnidirectional the things. And then the thing about this guy, you know, can be brought in um, and then actually it positions its handrail anywhere you want. So getting into your bus and going out there, I wish to have the uh, rail here. Here you are, you can just do that. Well, we can think about the many uh, use cases. So in this case, in the bedroom, you know, line to sit and the sit to stand the transitions can be made. For every you know, transition, you wish to have the rail, rails at the different locations, but uh, this one is basically reconfigurable, you know, repositioned to, to the ones um, that you need. Uh, here's a typical you know, uh, sit to stand transition in the bathroom, uh, the toilet, um, or you can just uh, call, you can just uh, say, Alex, uh, bring my hand uh, handle here, um, and then uh, uh, this uh, the device um, handle anywhere, you know, can um, come to the point uh, that is needed uh, the, for this person. So we uh, quickly made the prototype uh, handle assist robot um, shown here uh, is our first crude uh, prototype. Uh, we use the UR10E with the 3D uh, printed uh, handles over here, which is on the omnidirectional mobile base. And you know this handle is equipped with the uh, force sensor, so that then you know, we can detect the uh, the force, um, the whether uh, the user is holding it or not, and how much force is being applied. We made it in a remotely uh, controllable with the stations as shown here. So now the question is where to uh, place the handles. Of course, you know we can ask the user where would you like to have the handle. That's one way. But you know um, our goal is to make this process is a little bit more intelligent and smarter. So, uh, you know, given the, uh, you know, uh, the physical uh, or cognitive, uh, you know, uh, status of the, the particular uh, elderly person, um, and then uh, knowing what the sort of, uh, you know, transitions or bodily uh, movement assistance uh, he or she needs. So given that we may find the optimal locations uh, for placing the handle, handlebar. Well, as I said, this is a fully flexible system, so it's up to us where to place the handles in a way that is actually best serving for the users. So we look at the four scenarios, um, you know, that represent the diverse examples of ambulation activities that the elderly people have, uh, some diff you know, experience some difficulties, uh, these include the uh, you know, sit to stand uh, from a toilet, uh, standing up in a bus stop, and then lie to sit um, in a bed and sit to stand in a bed. So these are four types. And the first you know, uh, question is that where to place the uh, handles? And then actually, uh, you know, um, um, there are many ways of uh, you know, addressing this in the problem. But I know one the very uh, you know, simple and then effective ones of which we found is the following. We first videotape uh, the, uh, the typical movement without the uh, use of the handles. And then we ask the human subject, uh, you know, at which stage, you know, which you know, posture you had the most difficulty, meaning that uh, you, know, you have to use the highest uh, you know, muscle strengths at that uh, particular posture. Uh, you know, in the course of uh, you know, changing the uh, transitions from A, a uh, you know, posture to uh, B posture. So first uh, we identify the hardest uh, you know, point, uh, that we call the critical point, critical point. And now, you know, and by examining the videotape, um, we basically, you know, uh, you know, identify the which directions it is moving and uh, which particular point uh, he or she had the uh, most difficulty. And uh, we, uh, you know, uh, identify, we uh, determine the optimum uh, the locations of the handle at that particular critical point of which you're needing, uh, you know, you know, largest assistance. So, um, so, so, um, you know, let's see in this case, you know, support that the uh, critical point 
um, handled could be placed here or here or here. This is actually standard uh, the government recommended uh, you know, handle locations, right? So, you know, with the use of some kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, metric uh, to evaluate the effectiveness um, of the handle assistance, we like to find the optimal one automatically. So the way we did it is that, you know, from the video, the center mass of the whole body is determined and its velocity at the critical point. So as I said, say a particular you know, situation, so he and experienced the uh, you know, biggest actual difficulty. And at that critical point, uh, we um, identified the velocity of this you know, center of mass. Um, and then uh, you know, at that particular configuration, um, you know, suppose we have a you know, bar here, how much force the arm can generate. We uh, use the, uh, some simple biomechanical model to uh, evaluate this. And then the point is that, you know, suppose that this is the direction you want to, uh, you know, you moved uh, actually. And then uh, this is the uh, direction of force you can create. Maybe uh, if these two, you know, uh, vectors are more aligned, uh, the force generated uh, through this uh, handles is most effectively used in pushing up uh, this, you know, central mass in this particular direction. So we look at the inner product between the disk vector and the disk vector. That's actually a you know, magnitude, uh, um, yeah, um, of these two vectors uh, times the cosine, you know, um, you know, the, uh, the phi um, involved in here, projecting this one onto this. We like to maximize this. Now at the same time, uh, you know, we have to create uh, some velocity. So I know velocity cannot be created in a certain direction if the arm configuration is singular. singular. Um, so we have to think about the type of manipulability and then we like to have a reasonable manipulability. And to make the stuff much simpler, we look at this angle in this particular case, so this angle, theta six, um, and then, uh, you know, if you know, the this value is basically in a large, that actually close to a singular value. Um, so uh, we added this one with this in a weighting factor A, and then we like to uh, um, maximize uh, the, this actually, um, you know, index uh, by selecting uh, this actually, you know, uh, you know, bar locations. Uh, there are a little bit of you know, mathematics involved in here, but we can find the, um, you know, optimal point. Um, um, in doing this, so we use a very simple biomechanical model to compute the center of mass, and then actually, you know, force generated by by grabbing the uh, you know handle. So uh, shown here is a you know a experiment of four scenarios that I talk about. So in this case, you know, uh, this is a bus stop and you know standing up, and then the bar is placed here. Uh, this is and most actually effective in the sense that the uh, force is generated here versus uh, the directions uh, he wants to uh, move up, uh, most aligned, and then actually it's not actually close to a singular configuration, um, that kind of stuff. So we found that these actually location to be the optimum um, in the case of toilet use, and this is the optimal point, uh, um, you know, um, and, and such. Also, by using the uh, force sensor here, that we measure the, how much force uh, um, and he used uh, in, at the point. But basically, uh, this actually uh, point is the critical point, um, and then uh, we evaluate how much you know uh, this one is you know did contribute to uh, you know um, you know rising up and then or, or in the here and the there. So it turns out that, that the um, bus, you know, a bit like to set that this is a very special case. But other than that, you know, um, yeah, the force measured here is basically used very effectively. Uh, significant uh, force is created in this direction, and then you know, velocity is basically created uh, um, motion is created in, in this way. So. Um, um, yeah, you know, the baseline comparison is that, you know, uh, baseline is without uh, the handles. So without the handles, you know, basically zero force, uh, the, these forces basically assist the, you know, the person to, um, to change the posture. Now, one interesting observation is, is this case uh, that's a, you know, toilet, uh, you know, uh, use case. Um, so this is the point that the, uh, the traditional fixed 
uh, raid is placed somewhere here. Um, and then we compare the, uh, the case um, between our, our optimal location versus uh, this is a traditional fixed handle and you know, locations. Um, in the case uh, here, uh, you have to push down this and you know, raid you know, very strongly to uh, basically lift the body up. And then that actually, you know, needing almost a 40 percent, 41 percent of the total uh, body weight um, must be applied here to stand up. On the other hand, if you place the hand over here, only 25 percent of the, you know, um, you know the mass is, uh, the force is to be generated here, and then effectively using the um, kind of, you know, foot you know, uh, placing here, that is to create the moment uh, about uh, this point. Uh, so, you know, um, in many ways, we found that the if we are able to place the handle at the any point uh, that's actually a best serve uh, for the user, we can actually, you know, help them quite a significantly. This is a very simple device, but uh, it does work very well. Well, besides the, uh, the mathematical optimizations and such, you know, we uh, want to have a kind of a you know user experience evaluations. So this is a very subjective uh, you know um, you know ratings. But uh, you know four scenarios we ask the human subject that the kind of a difficulty uh, you, you know he experienced. Uh, you know um, um, you know uh, rate the one to five or five with five hardest. Um, and then comparing uh, that one with the use of a handlebar. So there's a significant uh, you know, reduction of the difficulty, uh, five down to two and three down to one. That is something we found to be very effective. Now, this is the uh, uh, quick video. As people age, grab bars are commonly installed around the home environment to provide stability and support for everyday activities. However, grab bars are costly and constrained by the room layout, resulting in suboptimal handle locations. What if there was a way to put a handle where it would most support the body? Enter Handle Anywhere, a mobile reconfigurable robot capable of positioning a handle to optimally support an elderly patient. The robot is operated via joysticks and can be switched to free drive mode to allow a therapist to position the handle for a patient. These handle poses can be saved and retrieved from memory. Additionally, the system can be fully teleoperated from anywhere in the world in real time with low latency. The therapist can see camera views of the robot and its surroundings, as well as force and torque data on the handle button, allowing them to know when the patient grabs onto the handle. To determine where the handle should be optimally located during everyday activities, we developed a 2D mathematical model of the human body in the sagittal plane. Experimental trials identified the body pose requiring the maximal muscle exertion for specific scenarios, such as getting up from a toilet. From here, we identify the center of mass of the body, excluding the weight of the arms. We also determine the velocity vector of the center of mass. Modeling the arm as rigidly attached to the handlebar, the arms become a three-bar linkage with a virtual stick to the center of mass. Joint torques produce a force at the center of mass, and by optimizing the location of the handlebar, we can maximize the inner product of the arm force and center of mass velocity vector. A penalty is applied to handle locations that are too far or too close to the body. In experimental trials, our calculated handle placements allowed the test subject to offload a significant portion of their body weight onto the handlebar in both the lateral and vertical directions, depending on the movement. The handle also reduced the subject's perceived effort during each movement. Okay, so that was, yeah. Um, so the second topic, I don't know the different, but it does help uh, other people to uh, maintain the balancing capability. So, you know, the, uh, the, this is the uh, work uh, uh, jointly with the uh, um, um, yeah, rehabilitation hospitals and so forth. Now, um, 
Um, Dr. Peter Wayne, uh, he is actually uh, the physical medicine the doctor at the Brigham Women's Hospitals. Uh, he's the director of uh, integrative uh, medicine uh, you know, uh, you know, center. Um, he is, uh, he studied uh, uh, Chinese medicine and uh, he is an advocate of uh, uh, Tai Chi, um, which is pretty good uh, to enhance the uh, muscle strength and, uh, and actually flexibility and then uh, neuromuscular reflex and then coordinations improved and the fold related anxiety reduces and then you know, many, many important things and the physical activities up the pain to go down and the self-efficacy um, increases. So he really wants, wants the people to use uh, the, to uh, and execute the uh, Tai Chi exercise. But the you know, problem is that, uh, um, yeah, this actually uh, Tai Chi exercise is particularly useful for frail older adults or people having uh, some uh, balancing disorder. Um, however, it is very dangerous if they take a Tai Chi exercise on their own without the physical therapist. And then this is particularly useful if they do so daily at home, right? Um, so uh, we uh, came up with this idea, you know, we use the kind of a body robot that can support a person during a Tai Chi exercise. Uh, the, uh, um, the human subject is wearing a, uh, you know, this the pants. It is actually connected uh, the, through uh, this cables, uh, special cables to this robotic uh, system structure. And then this is free to move. It doesn't actually provide that much in you know, a load you know, moving here. But in case you know, lo you know, we found that they're losing the um, in a balance, um, this uh, cables are locked and then uh, uh, we can avoid the hard hit, uh, falling a hard hit uh, on the floor. And also, this is a robotic system, so it goes together with the, uh, um, and the humans as he or she step up and down, to, you know, uh, move forward, you know, sideways, the robot moves accordingly. So let me show you the video. Uh, One, two, three, Four, five. So this is actually cables, and then uh, you know it goes together with the uh, you know the this patient. So one. Yeah. Um. Just so you know we don't have to repeat it. So so that that's actually the system we are building. And just quickly one more you know uh, one. So um you know exercise is great. But nonetheless, the people fall, even though they use the uh, the walkers at home. Um, we 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 uh, we learned that there are lots of actually fall cases. I know happened then, even though they use a you know walkout. So fall and the predictions and the prevention is important. And we uh, you know uh, developed a uh, untippable walker and then machine learning for predicting um, the uh, uh, possible uh, you know, falls. So people use this uh, um, you know, walker still fall in the home and then care facilities. Um, and the care facilities or rehabilitation center, they use uh, this type of uh, you know, gait trainer, which has a large you know, base of support, the BOS uh, here. But you can't use this one in the home environment that you have to go through uh, the narrow channels and a maneuver in such a crowd of the area. So I know maybe uh, in a walker is better. This is the maximum and the width so it can allow uh, it can be used. However, that's not good enough uh, and to prevent the kind of tipping. So what we like to do is that uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the real BOS of this device uh, and under normal use is just a small that you know allows a user to maneuver this kind of environment but uh, in case uh, it is actually being tipped or something happens the BOS expands uh, you know uh, quickly so this is the device that we, we developed uh, this is just a standard walker but uh, in case you know a person is actually uh, losing the balance um, this extra leg expands. So in you know, four ways it expands and the BOS 
you know, increase dramatically. Um, and then we use that uh, actually a cable and then the harness technology in here, the same one as the, um, yeah, the Tai Chi, uh, uh, you know, robot assisted Tai Chi exercise machines. Um, so, and then this the device is actually interesting uh, because even though you have a wall here, it basically supported. Uh, so it is basically, you know, untippable. And then uh, um, these legs can be deployed fully, you know, less than 400 milliseconds. Now, why we picked the 400 milliseconds? We actually examined the many of the four cases that taken you know, from uh, lots of the videos, and then we analyze how much actually, you know, how long does it take from the onset of balance to a uh, pelvis floor, you know, hard to hit contact. It's in a hundred, um, yeah, uh, one, about the one point, uh, you know, two or three, you know, second. And actually, uh, it takes uh, 583 milliseconds on average, um, you know, balancing the, uh, losing the balance, and then actually body is descending, uh, and then uh, result in the uh, uh, flow of contact, uh, that's a times of 583 uh, milliseconds. So, you know, if we can detect the uh, likeliness of, uh, you know, uh, the fall, uh, the fall and uh, event, we can actually deploy that then the legs, and within this, uh, I know the time we set the 400 millisecond or less than that, so we can actually avoid the, you know, uh, the falling of this. And then, as far as the uh, uh, this, you know, walker is untippable, and then actually, you know, um, we have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, connections between the body and then uh, this, you know, uh, walker frame uh, by using that uh, uh, special the cables as I showed you. Um, we can avoid the hard hit you know, on the uh, ground. So we collected a lot of data, you know, using MIT's clinical research centers facilities, and then we simulated uh, many of uh, the four cases, similar to the ones we observed in the videos. Um, we just used the IMU and then actually, uh, you know, find the data and then analyze it, uh, how the, uh, you know, four cases can be um, you know, predicted. And typically, we have some kind of onset of imbalance uh, situations, and then uh, this is the I know particular fall. Um, yeah, you know, from this point, it's actually um, you know, going to really I know four cases start start the descending phase. So what we like to do is to build some machine learning um, you know uh, for the uh, pre uh, prediction and systems. Um, analyzing uh, this kind of patterns of data to predict the uh, um, yeah the fall case you know before the uh, this actually uh, you know critical time leaving uh, about the 400 milliseconds to deploy that legs. Um, so this is actually the systems that we built. Uh, we use uh, an LSTM, uh, the machine learning techniques, uh, detecting the um, you know, signals, um, and then uh, this is timeline uh, before we falling. Uh, we we basically uh, predict the um, things uh, properly, um, and then uh, this is the deadlines of uh, predictions, and by that we just make the uh, you know uh, the decisions, and within the uh, limited time uh, we successfully um, release it, uh, and then actually um, you know we you know uh, we can catch the uh, you know fraud in this way. So just uh, my quick summary, and uh, I talk about you know, three uh, the topics. Uh, first one, the handle anywhere. This is a simple, very intuitive, and uh, easy to use. But turns out that the uh, according to uh, caregivers and the physical medicine, the doctors they love it uh, because it's simple. And then uh, you know we can place uh, such you know uh, the device uh, in a way that you know much more effective. So. Um, yeah, um, this one is particularly useful in the early stage of balancing the mobility disorders. Um, uh, many research and issues are actually you know, uh, being considered in the handle optimizations, the use of uh, musculoskeletal models uh, to better actually understand and then uh, you know, uh, optimize the uh, use of the, this device. I think the robot assisted Tai Chi exercise would have some impact uh, because um, you know, exercise is very good, but I know how to do it and safely without the supervision of uh, caregivers or, you know, uh, physical therapist. Um, this uh, particular robot allows them to, to do that, you know, safely at the home. 
and then um, and then, no matter what do we do, but at the end of the day, um, we have to really prevent the fall. So, you know, we developed the untippable worker um, and then for predictions, you know, systems. For predictions, algorithms are also usable for this and you know, robot assisted uh, Tai Chi exercise. So that may be one of the important uh, uh, things that we have to do. Uh, just to make a quick uh, acknowledgement and uh, three, um, uh, the two of my graduate students, uh, uh, Roberto Bori and Emily Kamienski, I made a significant contributions along with the a uh, business of postdoc, uh, you know, Hirofumi Itagaki. And also we collaborated closely with uh, the Dr. Paolo Bonetto, Sporting Rehab Hospitals, and the Dr. Peter Wayne, being in the Women's Hospital. Uh, these uh, works are being supported by National Robotics Initiative and the NSK uh, Limited. Thank you.